Speed racing is one of the most colorful and dramatic forms of competition in the world. Each year, it attracts hundreds of thousands of fans. And in the middle of the unlimited action, you'll find a proud blue entry known as Atlas Van Line. Through the years, the Atlas Van Line's teams have parlayed strong leadership, innovative equipment, and a dedicated crew, and great driving into one of the most successful records in motorsports. For many years, the Atlas colors were proudly carried by the most legendary figure in the history of power boating, Bill Muncy. Muncy had an incomparable career, winning eight gold cups, seven national championships, and 62 races, the last 37 of them for Atlas Van Lines. Following Muncy's death, at the 1981 World Cup race in Acapulco, many thought that Atlas Van Line's years in racing had ended. But Fran Muncy and Atlas Van Line's chairman, O.H. Frisbee, thought differently. They decided to continue racing in 1982 as a tribute to Bill Muncy. A new boat was constructed in just 100 days, and Chip Hanauer, the brightest young star on the unlimited horizon, was signed to drive. Just 24 days into the 1982 season, we witnessed an incredible storybook performance in the biggest race of them all, the Gold Cup in Detroit. The experts called it the most exciting race in the 78-year history of the sport. And here now is how I described it for NBC Sports. Kenowitz tiptoeing around the rooster tail turn, throwing the boat sideways. And he glances back to look for second place Hanauer as his wife Jenny and his daughter Kelly cheer him on. Chenoweth is leading lap number one. The average speed at this point just over 120 miles an hour with a three-second lead for Chenoweth. And of course, immediate speculation call as to what this record speed can produce. Remember earlier today, Hanauer subscribing to the old Bill Muncy theory, you push the bud as hard as you can and hope that she breaks. That worked earlier, once today, and possibly that's what this youngster from Washington is thinking now as he stalks Dean Chenoweth in this, the second of five laps. Chenoweth takes the wide line, keeping the RPMs on that Griffon engine up. But Hanauer moves up to stalk the rooster tail coming off the back of Chenoweth's boat. Now at this point, Chenoweth cannot see where Hanauer sits as Hanauer begins to pull now down inside Chenoweth. And Chenoweth almost completely off the water as look at this tremendous charge by Hanauer. How he's keeping the boat under control is completely beyond me. Hanauer completely up in the air, but he still maintains his position along the bud. The bud sitting solidly in the water. Chenoweth holding the lead. Here comes Hanauer. They both pour on the power, pour on the nitrous oxide. And Hanauer forces his way past the bud as they decelerate to the turn. Now Chenoweth responds. They're in the roof and tail turn. Chenoweth wide once again, picking up the RPM. But Hanauer stays on the inside, and Hanauer moves into first. An incredible example of riding the very ragged edge. The youngster from Washington pushing that inside line, forcing Chenoweth wide, clearly establishing the lead now for the first time. Hanauer turning the lap at nearly 129 miles an hour. Now, two and a half laps into the Gold Cup and leading Chenoweth. One look at that as Hanauer bounces across the water. He's been driving like there's no tomorrow since the start of this race. Powered his way past Chenoweth and is now leading in the Gold Cup. Absolutely refusing to give even a fraction of an inch chip hand out. Oh, look at here. This is Heath in the Squire. And he, too, going airborne in spectacular fashion. Heath gives a wave to show everything is all right. Chip Hanauer, two and a half seconds out in front, trying desperately for his first Gold Cup victory and trying to do it especially as a tribute to Bill Muncy. Right behind is the bud, Dean Chenoweth, and he continues his charge, though his engine seems to be a little bit off song. You know, the crew chief, Jim Harvey, and all the others who worked so hard during the past week after the damage to the boat that Hanauer is driving, they have to be just jubilant inside right now to see that all the hours, all the hard work paying off with this impressive, tremendous performance by Chip Hanauer. Hanauer 
still maintain a pace of over 120 miles an hour in the bridge turn as he brings the boat around, jumps up into the air once again, clearing the prop and even the left side skid fin as he settles it back down, eases off the power, and then heads down the back straightaway. We see here now Hanauer still bounding through the water, still aggressively attacking the course as he laps the Madison. Hanauer now around the bridge turn, a punch of the nitrous and accelerates down the back stretch. The boat appears so graceful as he skims across the water. But remember, there is over four tons of water being thrown up in that rooster tail. It can devastate another boat should they happen to cross into it. Chip Hanauer taking that inside line now as he comes up behind the rooster tail of another boat. This is the Kentuckiana that he's chasing and catching, putting a lap down. John Petty driving that ancient pole now in fourth place, coming up by the boats of the Detroit Yacht Club, continuing to bounce and lurch as he heads for that final rooster tail turn. And should he negotiate this final corner, it's just a quick stretch run now to the checkered flag and a potential gold cup victory. A dream about to come true for Chip Hanauer as he accepts Accelerates for the last time across the line, and Chip Hanauer has won the Gold Cup. Dean Chenoweth comes across the line limping in second place. But Chip Hanauer has won his fourth unlimited race and his first Gold Cup. And look how happy he is as he waves his arm to the crowd and continues really at full speed, looking over, acknowledging the cheers of those gathered here on the Detroit River. In third place now, screaming for the line, is Tommy G, making a comeback in the square and finishing in third. And down on the dock, the anticipated jubilation, of course, much in evidence, O.H. Frisbee, 15 years, a sponsor of the boat that has just won the Gold Cup, Fran Muncy, crew chief Jim Harvey, and the jubilant driver himself now, almost in disbelief as the Atlas comes slowly back to the dock, a standing ovation from the throngs here in the Horace Dodge pits. Well, already there is a bit of a party beginning down in the pits as Chip Hanauer climbs off the boat and gives a hug and a kiss to Fran Muncy, the first woman owner of a boat to win the Gold Cup. The crowd has their salute, and the Gold Cup belongs to Chip Hanauer. Uh, it's the finest day I've ever had in my life. I'm so proud, and I hope Bill's happy, and, and my team, and Mr. Frisbee, it's, it's the happiest day of my life. <laughs> Following their APBA Gold Cup win in Detroit, the Atlas Fan Lines team went on to victory in Evansville, Seattle, San Diego, and Houston. A total of five of the nine series events and a sweep of the Gold Cup, National and World Championships. 1982 became a year to remember for Atlas Van Lines. The Kart Indy cars, Formula One, Can-Am, and Trans-Am, all had new series champions in 1983. In the major leagues of motorsports, only one team and one driver successfully defended their titles in 1983. Atlas Van Lines and Chip Hanauer. Being the defending champion carries extra weight and special pressures. You have additional responsibilities. You're the target for the competition. It's tough to become number one and tougher still to stay there. And if 1982 was a year to remember, the 1983 unlimited season began as a year to forget. At the season opener in Missouri, the Atlas Van Lines team failed to finish a single heat and for the first time in seven years, left a race without having scored a point. At the Atlas Van Lines Cup in Seneca, New York, the Atlas team served notice that they were back on form, posting a new world record in qualifying. But despite a great drive by Hanauer, the Atlas simply couldn't hold off the more powerful Miss Bud in the championship heat. Heading into Detroit, for the fourth race of the 1983 season, the Stroh's Thunderfest, the Atlas Van Lines team found itself winless and trailing Miss Bud by a whopping 1,100 points in the national title fight. But as they have done so many times, Jim Lucero, Crew Chief Jim Harvey, and the Atlas Van Lines Blue Crew came through yet again. It was a tough, demanding race course, and they battled problems all day long, but their persistence paid off with another victory. Two weeks later, it was the Stroh's APBA Gold Cup in Evansville, Indiana, world headquarters for Atlas Van Lines. While in Evansville, my colleague, Johnny Rutherford, took a moment to ask Chip Hanauer about the new cockpit design on the Atlas Van Lines. 
Chip, something's a little different with Atlas this year. The cockpit arrangement is somewhat different. Do you want to tell me a little bit about it? Well, let me back up and say what we used to do was the philosophy of throwing the driver out of the boat. If we had an accident, we always thought that the driver was to be thrown clear, which is all well and good if indeed the driver is thrown clear. But the percentage of, of time, the driver is going to be thrown into a, a worse situation. So really, we took a lesson from you guys in Indianapolis and decided to, to make a cockpit in a boat to absorb the energy, much like you guys hitting a wall and the car coming apart. We want to keep the driver in the boat, let the boat absorb the energy, and uh, hopefully save the driver. And the way we've done that has lowered me down inside the boat, where last year my head was above the engine, now I'm about 14 inches below it. We replaced what this used to be a fiberglass cowling, and now I've replaced it with honeycomb aluminum. It is virtually the strongest place in the boat. So I've got some real protection around me. And to take advantage of all this protection, of course I'm using seat belts to stay in the boat long enough to survive the crash. You're the first one that's used seat belts in a number of years, if, if at all. It's, it's hard to accept change. People, you know, we always went by the old philosophy, and to get someone to try something new is difficult. But now that I've, I have the new cockpit and the belts, I don't think I drive an unlimited boat without them. Hopes were high when Hanauer cruised the Atlas fan lines to a new world record in qualifying. But when a propeller blade went astray on the final testing run less than 24 hours before the Gold Cup, the Atlas crew was once again called upon to perform yet another round of heroics. In the Gold Cup final heat, Hanauer came through with some heroics of his own. Taking a competitor's errant rooster tail full in the face at the start of the race, the gutty young charger drove the entire final heat in a daze. His instincts and determination pushing him onward in spite of his injuries. Afterward, he told NBC's Gary Gerald how he won his second straight Gold Cup. All right, well, Paul, the culmination of a most unusual finish here in the Gold Cup. Here's the man. You provided all of us with some very anxious moments. Obviously, you appear to be okay at this point, Chip. Yeah, I'm all right. I got my bell rung a little bit, but I'm fine. Can you tell us what happened? Uh, one of the other boats at the start uh, took my lane away from me. It was only about a foot in front of me, so the water coming off that boat is like, you know, 100 fire hoses, and it took my face shield, and man, get crashed it into my face. So I had to run the race without a face shield and uh, a little blood up inside there. I couldn't see very well. I mean, without the face shield at 180, you know, you just can't open your eyes. And basically, I was using the bud to find my way around the race course, and that's all I could do. Uh, I couldn't get a good shot at him at the start because of uh, getting hit in the head. So I was just uh, very fortunate that the crew gave me a boat that would stay together. From Evansville, the circuit moved west. Atlas led briefly at Pasco, but lost a supercharger, ending a string of 17 consecutive heat finishes. At Seattle, a victory in the first heat gave Atlas Van Lines the high point lead for the first time of the season. But when the day ended, Atlas trailed Miss Bud by 769 points with only two races remaining. The Atlas Van Lines team simply had to win the next race on Mission Bay in San Diego if they were to have any hope of defending their national title. Once again, they came through like champions, setting new lap, heat, and race records as the Atlas Van Line stormed to victory in three straight heats and closed the gap in national points to 169. And when it was done, Chip Hanauer and crew chief Jim Harvey shared their thoughts with us. Yeah, Jim, we did everything we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to come down here and not break and just try and stay, you know, stay alive, stay close to him. And we did that, you know, thanks to, to Jim Harvey. And, you know, we had an explosion before that second heat. We heard a crew member and they got it in the water 12 seconds before the gun. And they're just the best in the business. Well, I made a comment uh, last night that, that even though we're into our ninth race, it feels like we've raced 18 times this year. And uh, we never stop working. It seems like there's always something we find or we have to correct. And, and this was no exception. This morning, uh, Chip gave me this sticker. And... Uh, Everybody was kidding me. They thought it was 100 proof, but it really was 100%. And every one of my team members will be wearing one tonight because they gave more than 100%. A first and a second at Houston gave Atlas Van Lines its fourth national championship in six years. And the winning tradition continued. It was their sixth national championship. Atlas Van Lines, the winning team.
Atlas Van Lines, the winning team, was brought to you by the Atlas Van Lines moving team and your local Atlas Van Lines agents. Special thanks, the American Powerboat Association, NBC Sports, ESPN, King TV 